everybody, this is Willie at NunaMossCrafts.com and I'm here today to show you how to make uh, a sweet dinner roll. That's a recipe I've been making for see about a year now and have um, tested it and developed it and and uh, have become really happy with it. So I think it's time to share it. And um, with that, let's just get started. So got all the, the basic ingredients um, to do this for the, the first step. So milk and water. Um, we have some salt, um, yeast, and sugar. And then we'll add the flour and an egg and a few things later. Uh, let's get going here. Um, a half a cup of milk. And a half a cup of water. And a third of a cup of sugar. I'm just using white sugar. Um, you could use brown or whatever as long as the yeast can feed on it. Add that to the mixture. Okay. A tablespoon of salt. And what we're going to do, and you could do this any, any way you'd like, but since I have a microwave right here, I'm going to keep this up for 45 seconds or so. Really just to get things warmed up and let that sugar dissolve in the liquid a little bit. Alright, we'll heat it up here but not scalding. You don't want it too hot because you will then burn your yeast. So fill it with a pinky. If it's too hot to put your pinky in, then it's too hot to put the yeast in. And we're just fine like that. Alright, so we're going to do three tablespoons of yeast. I buy my yeast bulk, usually from uh, one of the warehouses like Costco. Um, the little packets in there, if you're wondering, are um, um, oxygen absorbers. Helps keep it fresh, but I go through it pretty fast. Just kind of spread the yeast out over the surface. And what we're going to do here is let this sit uh, for a good 20 minutes and let uh, let it proof. And what that means is the yeast is getting activated. <clears throat> um, so when we go to actually make the dough for our rolls, um, it'll uh, be ready to do its thing. Um, I do like to mix it up a little bit at first just to make sure... Um, you know, nothing sitting on top of each other as far as the yeast. That's about all you need to do. Alright. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and cover that with just a dish towel to keep, you know, anything out of it while it's doing its thing. And so, like I said, about 20 minutes <clears throat> and I will record again to show you what it looks like when it's uh, when it's done proofing or the yeast is ready. In the meantime, I'm going to clean up, and so we'll see you in a few. Yeah, hey, back real quick. It is kind of a cold day here. Um, you know, we're January in, in Colorado at about 9,000 feet, and so I'm going to use another trick. And you know, if you haven't seen this before, go to my blog. I have another video on making these, but. This is a rice sock heater, and I have two of them. One of them's in the microwave. Um, but basically, it's rice in a sock. And they're really effective once you heat them up. And I'll heat these up in the microwave for about four minutes. But I'm going to put them underneath probably the, the yeast mixture here, um, you know, just to give that a, a, a good start. And then as 
Um, we start doing the dough as well, just to keep things nice and warm. It, the, you know, it means I don't have to use the oven, which is a huge energy sink, um, to do the same thing. So, go search on the new LostCrafts.com uh, blog for rice sock heater, and you'll, fit, you know, I'll show you how to make these as well. But I have two of them that I'm going to use uh, for doing this. Okay, so this is what the yeast will look like after it's proofed. It's been about 20 minutes, and hopefully you can see that. But it's nice and foamy. Just means that everything's real active and ready to do its thing in the dough. Alright, so the next step is to add um, the rest of the ingredients. And then we're going to let that stand and let it rise for quite a long time. About two hours is what I like to do. Okay, so the rest of the stuff is a third of a cup of butter, and I wanted to mention also, this recipe will be on the blog post, um, so if you like it want to try it, um, if you're watching this through YouTube, go down to the, the, the notes below the video, and there will be a link to the blog post, so just click that, and I'll try to make it you know nice and easy to print, um, so you don't have to you know write this down in the video or anything. But this is just a third of a, a, a cup of butter, so I'm going to soften that in the microwave. Okay, then we're going to add an egg, but I'm going to add some flour first. And this three cups. This is going to make 16 rolls, at least the way I like to pour it. Alright, so there is the flour. Now we have our softened butter. We'll pour right in there. And then an egg. It's a good idea to crack your eggs over another bowl just in case you uh, have a misfire and crack the shell. Get a big spoon and stir this up. By the way, these are the rice sock heaters I mentioned earlier. They really help with this, especially when it's kind of a colder day. Um, a lot of people across different environments may not have to worry about that. It's, but it gets pretty chilly here. So we're just going to mix everything up um, until it gets kind of hard to mix. And then I'm not, you know, a, a crazy nut about getting everything perfect this first go around. I just want everything kind of in a clump, um, kind of a uniform color to it. And then we're going to let it rise. And then once that's done, we're going to. Uh, punch the dough down and then mix it up again so I've seen people who have these exotic mixers and whatnot and I, I mean that would be really cool to have I don't have the, the money for that and I've never really seen the need for it um, if you can get this done um, I let my hands do the work a little bit later on um, so that's about how I leave it right there um, for the first rise, Let's scrape all the good stuff off of here. All right, and then back on the rice sock heaters, and you can see the level that it's at right now. I'm gonna go ahead and cover it again, and now we're gonna let it sit. I'm gonna take the first peek at it in about an hour and a half.
Okay, so we're back after a couple hours of letting this uh, yeast rise. I want to show you what that looks like, or the, uh, the dough rise. So remember what it looked like. Sorry. Um, and now the bowl is nearly full, and that's exactly what you want. So if you did your, your yeast proofing, <clears throat> and... Uh, Let it sit long enough, that's what you should have. Now what we're going to do, uh, you can see I have a little bit of flour here, and I have more on hand if need be. Go ahead and dump it out of the bowl, and you'll see all the nice uh, strands if you're doing this right. All the gluten strands. Go ahead and Get what you can out of the bowl. It's going to be really stringy at this point. Um, kind of difficult to work with, but uh, that'll change here in a sec because we're going to add some flour. But this is kind of going to be serve as the punch down, and then we're going to let it rise again. But it's going to rise again in the form of rolls on our baking pans. <clears throat> So what I like to do is just flour my hands a little bit at a time when I'm working this stuff until it just doesn't stick anymore. And you just, the second it doesn't stick, stop adding flour. That's the key. You don't want too much flour to make your, uh, your rolls kind of taste weird. Um, and too little is just too hard to work with. So we're going to keep rolling this until that happens. One thing that uh, is important about bread making, once you get past the, uh, the stickiness part, which we're still working on here a little bit, amazing how sticky this one is. But when you start working it, you really want to push and squeeze it and stretch that dough. Makes the uh, the strands of gluten extend and your end product again will be light and fluffy the more that you do that. But again, you know, I said earlier I'm not a big fan of mixers or bread makers ever since I've been doing this uh, for myself. And it's because I can really feel what's going on with my hands now. So I'm happy with the way this is now. Um, we're just on the edge of uh, beyond sticky. It's now and divide this into 16 parts. I'm worried about it, that uh, it's kind of nice to have some that are a little bit bigger than others. All right, so there's the eight. I'm gonna do the same thing to the next half. And then I'll show you how to roll them and put them on the pan. Okay, so we got everything chopped up. And I wanted to point out uh, the next step when you actually get to put these on um, the, the pans. The pans are totally ungreased. You don't need to grease them. But go ahead and take your, your individual rolls. I think this is where, you know, the, the mixers and the machines for for most people ends up kind of doing it for them and you don't really need that boy these guys are sticky today let's batter these up and so what you want to do is really kind of squeeze them when you're doing that 
um, and, and get them nice and compressed and nice and even and then they're going to make beautiful little rolls uh, and when we're done so you again stretch that those ingredients out in there and get a nice nice little roll okay and we're going to do that eight on each pan and then we're going to um, I'm going to heat up the rice sock heaters again put them up underneath there cover both of them let them sit for another hour hour and a half and let these rise and then we'll be into the oven Okay, so we got everything rolled into the uh, the nice ball shape here. Just after reheating the uh, the rice sock heaters, so I'm gonna put one of each of those under each of these pans just to provide some heat. This will be the second rise for all these dudes. Then just take a nice clean towel and we're going to cover them and kind of tuck in the sides to hold in that little bit of heat and then we're going to let them rise for another hour and a half. Okay so it's been an hour into these guys rising. Um, and we're going to let them go for a full hour and a half. If I wanted to take the towel off, I like to let them just do the last half hour in the open air. I'm not sure why. It's just something I like to do. But you can see how the little balls have, have risen really nicely. And in a half an hour, we will uh, pop them in the oven and we'll have our dinner rolls so we'll be back then okay so these guys have risen by themselves in the open air for a half hour after a nice covered rest and I think we're good to go the oven is preheated to 350 degrees and we're going to cook each of these separately for for 10 minutes just mostly due to the size of my oven so these guys go in first And timer set for 10 minutes. And we're going to be good to go. Okay, we're back. And it's been 10 minutes for these guys. So let's pull them out. You want to pull them out just when they're starting to get a little brown. In 10 minutes, at least for where I'm at, works almost perfect every time. <clears throat> so in with the next ones. And another 10 minutes. And while that is going on, I like to make sure they break loose at the bottom of the pan. And then I like to flip them over. Nice brown bottoms. Then get more beautiful than that. No burnage. Anything around there. So now for the next round. The next batch here. And again, same thing. Bust them loose. It's usually not a big issue. And <clears throat> the way I like to store these is in a Ziploc bag or you know whatever you like to do. We reuse our Ziplocs, so this is it had several batches of rolls in it. Um, but let them cool down for a while until they're kind of room temperature. 
Otherwise, you'll put them in the Ziploc and you'll just get a lot of humidity and it'll be kind of weird. So let them cool down for, you know, an hour, hour and a half. And stick them in there and you're good to go. I guess uh, before we end the video, just so you can see what these look like. It's a beautiful, fluffy um, texture to it. So everybody in my family, especially my daughter, loves these. So give it a shot. And uh, if you like them, uh, send me some comments. Let's, uh, let's get some action on YouTube and the blog. Again, the recipe will be on the blog site, newandlostcrafts.com. There will be a link if you're watching this on YouTube in the description area. So, signing off, this is Willie at newandlostcrafts.com. Have a great evening, and um, thanks for watching.